Hello and welcome to the first Defense Web TV episode of the year. On behalf of Army Recognition, I wish you the best for 2014. In this edition, we will focus first on the S-300 surface-to-air missile system. We will then turn to the naval field and cover the latest aircraft carrier developments in the Asian region. We will also detail the military equipment used by the Army of Azerbaijan. And finally, an overview of gyrocopter technology with a flight test by no other than Army Recognition's chief editor. Up next, the news in brief. The International Defense Exhibition and Conference IDEX is the most strategically important tri-service defense exhibition in the world. IDEX is the only international defense exhibition and conference in the MENA region demonstrating the latest technology across land, sea and air sectors of defense. It is a unique platform to establish and strengthen relationships with government departments, businesses and armored forces throughout the region. IDEX is the perfect place to demonstrate equipment and crafts. Daily choreographed displays will take place on the water and on the purpose-built demonstration track. The unmanned systems area will bring together manufacturers and suppliers to showcase the latest and future unmanned systems and technology. Army Recognition is the official online show daily for IDEX 2015. To increase your impact before, during and after the event, contact our marketing team now. China's armored forces have been officially requested to choose domestic brands when procuring military vehicles. According to a document issued by the four headquarters of the Chinese People's Liberation Army, purchase of new military cars should be arranged within a centralized system and vehicles should be selected from domestic brands. Thales UK announced that it has signed a contract worth over £100 million with the Indonesian Ministry of Defense for Force Shield. Thales' integrated advanced air defense system. In addition to the supply of Star Trek short-range air defense missiles, the system comprises Control Master 200 radar, weapon coordination systems, Rapid Ranger mobile weapon systems, and lightweight multiple launchers. Belgian company Effenerstal has confirmed the purchase of FN Scar H precision rifles by Lithuania's Ministry of Defense. The statement of the Ministry of Defense said that the contract is worth 2.87 million euros with the first delivery to begin this year. The number of rifles ordered was not made public by the Ministry. Picture released in January on a Russian military blog shows that Russia developed a new light self-propelled artillery system based on the 6x6 Falk light tactical vehicle VPK-39273 with a 120mm gun 2B16 on a K mounted at the back of the chassis. According to some Chinese and Algerian internet sources, Algeria purchased Chinese-made PLZ-45 or PLZ-52 155 self-propelled howitzers. Several pictures were released this month on a local military blog showing artillery howitzers carried by trucks on a highway in Algeria which could be the Chinese-made PLZ-45 or PLZ-52. Algerian Navy future BDSL amphibious vessel was launched at the Ficantieri shipyard in early January. The Calat Beni Abbas is based on the Italian San Giorgio class LPD. This new amphibious vessel can accommodate up to 6 landing craft, up to 15 armored vehicles and several helicopters. Delivery of the ship is set for the end of this year. According to the Polish MOD, invitations to start technical dialogue were sent to several submarine builders in late 2013. The Polish MOD just announced that four companies answered the invitations. France's DCNS with the Scorpion, German company Thyssen Group Marine System with its Type 212A, 
Cocoons from Sweden with the A26 and Lavancia of Spain with the S80. Polish MOD should launch the tender during the summer. The Rafale has successfully completed its first test flights in a new heavily armed configuration, comprising six air-to-air -air precision AASM weapons, four medium and long-range air-to-air missiles from the Mika family, two very long-range meteor missiles, as well as three 2,000-liter fuel tanks. According to Dassault Aviation, by increasing the capabilities of its 14 hardpoints, the Rafale is the only fighter aircraft in the world capable of carrying 1.5 times its own weight. On January 15th, Airbus Defense and Space started flight tests of Taurus standoff precision missiles on Eurofighter. Taurus KEPD-350 is a German-Swedish missile that is manufactured by MBDA Germany and Saab Dynamics. This cruise missile incorporates stealth characteristics and has an official range in excess of 500 km. On December 29th, the French Air Force conducted the first operational mission of its brand new A400M tactical airlifter. The direct flight departed Orléans Air Base in France and landed at Bamako Airport, Mali, with 22 tons of material on board the aircraft. The S300 with NATO designation SA-10 Grumble is a series of initially Soviet and later Russian long-range surface-to-air missile systems produced by NPO Almaz, all based on the initial S300P version. The S300 system was first deployed by the Soviet Union in 1979, designed for the air defense of large industrial and administrative facilities, military bases, and for the control of airspace against enemy strike aircraft. The latest variant of the system is the S300 PM2 or PMU2 for the export version. The S300 PMU2 favorite, designated SA-20B Gargoyle B by NATO, was introduced in 1997. It is an upgrade of the S300 PMU1 with range extended further to 195 km with the introduction of the 48N 6E2 missile. The S300 PMU-2 is apparently capable to be used against not just short-range ballistic missiles, but also medium-range tactical ballistic missiles. The combat capabilities of the new systems were first tested on August 10, 1995, in the Kaputstein Riar testing range in an encounter with Scud ballistic missiles. Several 48N6E2 missiles were launched and successfully intercepted the incoming Scuds. The S300 PMU-2 is equipped with four paired missile canister launchers. They are fitted at the rear of either 5P85TE semi-trailers or 5P85SE truck chassis. In firing position, the missile's containers are raised in vertical position. The S300 PMU-2 favorite system can use the 48N6E2 air defense missiles as well as 48N6E 5V55K and 5V55R missiles, all used in early generation S300 PMU-1 systems. A typical S300 PMU-2 favorite battery comprises the 83M6E2 command post and up to 12 launchers of type 5P85AC or 5P85TE. Each launcher carry 4 missiles. The command post consists of the 54K6E2 Battle Management Center and the 64N6E2 Acquisition Radar with a maximum detection range of 300 km. The favorite new command post has the capability to control the following S300 variants PMU or SA10 Grumble and PMU1 or SA20 Gargoyle, but it can also control the older S200VE or SA5 Gammon batteries. The command post relays coordinates and commands to the 5N62VE square pair guidance and illumination radar. According to the manufacturer Almaz, the S300 PMU2 is intended to defeat current and future air targets in all conditions under intensive electro countermeasures and multiple threat environments such as strategic, tactical and multiple aircraft, ECM platforms, AWACS aircraft, as well as reconnaissance and strike aircraft including stealth platforms, strategic cruise missiles including those flying in terrain following mode at extreme low altitudes, ballistic trajectory air launch missiles, and tactical and theater ballistic missiles. 
The S300 PMU-2 favorite can engage targets flying from 10 meters to 27 kilometers above the surface at a speed of up to 10,000 kilometers per hour. It is claimed that it has a kill ratio ranging from 0.8 to 0.93 against aircraft and from 0.8 to 0.98 against Tomahawk-class cruise missiles. They rule the seas and they are must-have assets for any nation willing to be reckoned as a major player on the world scene. Aircraft carriers are the ultimate diplomatic and power projection tool. As tensions are rising in several Asian seas, it is not surprising that several nations in Asia are getting or trying to get aircraft carrier capabilities. The first aircraft carrier of the Chinese Navy, the Liaoning, was originally laid down as a sister ship to the Admiral Kuznetsov aircraft carrier for the Soviet Navy. The vessel was laid down in Ukraine in December 1985 and named Varyag in 1990. With the fall of the Soviet Union, Ukraine did not have the financial resources to complete Varyag and in 1998, a Chinese company purchased the hull for 20 million US dollars. The official plans of the company were to turn Varyag into a floating casino. But it turned out this was just a cover and the actual buyer was indeed the Chinese government who wanted to procure an aircraft carrier for its navy. Permission was granted to China in 2001 to tow the Varyag through the Istanbul Strait. The aircraft carrier was unfinished and didn't have engines at the time. The hull was towed to the Dalian Shipbuilding Industry Company, the largest shipyard in China. Refitting of the ship started in 2003, lasted until 2011 and included dry dock work. Engines as well as several Chinese-made weapon systems and sensors were installed on board. In August 2011, following 8 years of refitting, the first aircraft carrier of the Chinese Navy sailed out to sea under its own power for the first time. This was the first in a series of sea trials that would take place until the official commissioning of the ship in September 2012. The ex variag was officially commissioned into the People's Liberation Army Navy as Liaoning with hull number 16. In November 2012, air operations started with Shenyang J-15 fighters performing takeoff and landing on board the Liaoning. The Shenyang J-15 is a carrier-based fighter aircraft in development by the Shenyang Aircraft Corporation and the 601 Institute specifically for the Chinese Navy. The J-15 is based on a Russian design Shukhoi Su-33. The Liaoning may accommodate 24 J-15 fighters and up to 16 helicopters for early warning, search and rescue, and anti-submarine warfare. With a length of 304 meters, the Chinese aircraft carrier displaces 65,000 tons. It is a stowbar carrier, meaning short takeoff but arrested recovery. Unlike US Navy aircraft carriers that use a catapult to launch aircraft, Chinese Navy fighters are launched under their own power using a ski jump to assist takeoff. They require arrestor wires to land on a ship. In late 2013, the Chinese Navy released pictures for the first time showing the Liaoning with an escort of surface vessels. Two missile destroyers and two missile frigates participated in the mission. This led military observers to speculate that the Chinese Navy's aircraft carrier battle group has taken shape with the Liaoning as its core. Finally, the Communist Party official announced in late January this year that China was at work on a home-built aircraft carrier at a shipyard in Dalian. This aircraft carrier would be based on the Liaoning, but modified and improved to best match the Navy's needs. This new aircraft carrier is reportedly called Type 001A. India is another Asian country in the middle of aircraft carrier procurement. In November 2013, the Vikramaditya was handed over to the Indian Navy during a ceremony at the Sevma shipyard in Severodvinsk, Russia. Vikramaditya, just like the Chinese aircraft carrier, is a retrofitted vessel originally built for the Soviet Navy. In this case, it is a Kiev-class heavy aircraft carrying cruiser, originally named Admiral Gorshkov. Following a large-scale retrofit at Sevma shipyard, the aircraft carrier has received a modern flight deck and a ski jump. The carrier is able to accommodate 20 Russian-made MiG-29K or 20 Indian-made naval LCAs. With a displacement of 45,000 tons, 
The new Indian carrier is smaller than the Liaoning, but it is quite larger than the existing carrier operated by India, the Virat, which can, you can see here sailing with Vikramaditya. In August 2014, India launched its first indigenous aircraft carrier, INS Vikrant, at Cochin Shipyard in the southwest of the country. The launch of the 37,000 tons 260 meters long vessel is being scheduled by three years. It is expected to start its three trials in 2016 before being commissioned into the Indian Navy by the end of 2018. The aircraft carrier will be capable to accommodate 30 fighters and helicopters including MiG-29K fighters and KA-31 helicopters. The last Asian nation to have launched an aircraft carrier project is Japan. The Izumo first ship of the 22 DDH project was unveiled for the first time in August 2014. Officially designated helicopter destroyer by the Japan Maritime Self-Defense Force, it will become the flagship of its fleet. First of the 22 DDH class, the Japanese Navy Izumo is the largest warship built by Japan since World War II. The 248-meter long and 20,000 tons helicopter carrier is still under construction in Yokohama and is set to be commissioned into service in 2015. Once commissioned, the ship will initially deployed with only 9 SH-60 helicopters. That's despite the large size of the flight deck and hangar. Many experts speculate that 22 DDH type vessels may already be able to accommodate very short takeoff and landing platforms such as the F-35B and V-22 Osprey given the large nature of the ships, especially when compared to the existing Uiga class vessels which you can see at the bottom here. The Azerbaijani Armored Forces were re-established in 1991 following the fall of the Soviet Union. Nowadays, with an annual budget exceeding $3.3 billion, the military of Azerbaijan is one of the main local power in South Caucasus. The Azerbaijani Land Forces counts 119,000 soldiers, trained under NATO standards, but mostly equipped with Russian-made military equipment. In June 2013, Russia started delivering tanks, artillery cannons and rocket launchers worth $1 billion to Azerbaijan. The arms package signed in a series of contracts between 2011 and 2012 includes close to 100 units in a mix of T-90C tanks, Smirch and TOS-1A multiple rocket launchers, and Mr. A and Vina artillery cannons. Azerbaijan already operates IMI's 122mm Lynx multiple launch rocket system, which it mounts on a Kamaz-63-502 heavy truck. In June 2014, during the military parade for the 95th anniversary of the Armored Forces of Azerbaijan, a number of new equipment was showed for the first time to the public. Azerbaijan has been actively modernizing its military with the procurement of weapons from Ukraine, Belarus, Israel and South Africa. At the same time, Azerbaijan is the first state of the region to manufacture its own armored defense technology. The local industry, in collaboration with foreign partners, is manufacturing Matador and Marauder for the Ministry of Defense. T-90S main battle tanks were purchased from Russia in 2011. Soyuz production started from 1992, production of T-90S modifications from 2001. The T-90 design is based on the T-72 tanks, but differs from its predecessor for the level of protection and fire control equipment. 2S19 Mistia S is a 152mm self-propelled howitzer which entered service with the Russian army in 1989. It has recently entered service in the army of Azerbaijan. The 152mm howitzer is designed to defeat targets from 12km up to 29km distance. The TR-300 Kasirga is a 300mm multi-barrel rocket launcher system designed and manufactured in Turkey by Rocketsan. It has been newly included in the inventory of the Azerbaijani Armored Forces. TR-122 Sakarya rocket system, purchased from Turkey, was also shown during the parade. In June 2014, Azerbaijan confirmed the purchase of 100 Russian-made BMP-3 armored infantry fighting vehicles. The BMP-3 is one of the most heavily armed IFV in service. The vehicle is armed with a 100mm 2A70 rifled gun and 130mm dual-feed automatic cannon. The BMP-3 is also able to fire AT-10 Sabre anti-tank guided missile. In July 2010, Russia signed an agreement to deliver two battalions of S-300PMU-2 to Azerbaijan. 
It is a long-range, super-to-air missile system designed to engage aircraft, cruise missiles and theater ballistic missiles in intense clutter and jamming environments. The BM-30 Smurge was also presented for the first time during the parade. It is a Russian-made 300mm multiple rocket launcher system designed to defeat personnel, armored and soft-skinned targets in concentrated areas, artillery batteries, command posts and ammunition depots at a maximum range of 90 km. Israeli UAVs Heron and Hermes 450 were also unveiled during the military parade of June 2013. In January 2014, Turkey announced the delivery of the first T-155 Fertina 155mm self-propelled howitzer to Azerbaijan. A gyrocopter is a type of rotorcraft which uses an unpowered rotor in auto-rotation to develop lift and an engine-powered propeller similar to that of a fixed-wing aircraft to provide thrust. Today, and in the very near future, Modern and older technologies may be merged for potential military applications of gyroplanes in combat or combat support roles. Some of these missions include search and rescue, border patrol, and close air support roles. There may even be UAV applications. Army Recognition's chief editor had the chance to conduct a flight test on board the Chinese Hunting Eagle military gyrocopter at the Shangji Baoji Special Vehicles Factory in China. The gyrocopter was invented by the Spanish engineer Juan de la Sierra. In 1921, he participated in a design competition to develop a bomber for the Spanish military. De la Sierra designed a three-engine aircraft, but during an early test flight, the bomber stalled and crashed. The gyrocopter is characterized by a free spinning rotor that turns because of passage of air upward through the rotor. The vertical component of the total aerodynamic reaction of the rotor gives lift for the vehicle and sustains the autogyro in the air. A separate propeller provides forward thrust and can be placed in a tractor configuration with the engine and propeller at the front of the fuselage or pusher configuration with the engine and propeller at the rear of the fuselage. Over 1000 gyrocopter are used by worldwide authorities for military and law enforcement. The first American police authority to evaluate an autogyro is the Tombaugh Police in Texas. With a grant from the US Department of Justice together with city funds, the Tombaugh Police found that their gyrocopter costs much less than a helicopter to buy and operate. Another advantage is that it is stable to land in 40 knots crosswinds. Since 2009, several projects in Kurdistan, Iraq have been realized. In 2010, the first autogyro was handed over to the Kurdish Minister of Interior. The gyrocopters will be used for various missions including pilot training, control and monitoring of the approach and takeoff path of the airports, and deterrence of terrorist activities. Privately funded Pakistani engineers have also developed a gyrocopter with a seating capacity for two persons. This gyrocopter was first flown in front of the Pakistani media in 2011. Local engineers claim their gyrocopter will be able to fly as high as 17,000 feet and will be capable to reach top speeds of 190 km per hour. There are many advantages in flying a gyrocopter over conventional aircraft. Gyrocopters don't stall or tailspin. They can fly at very low speeds. They have genuine short takeoff and landing performance. They are easy to transport and quick to set up. They require minimal storage space, cost around 10% of the purchase and operating costs of a helicopter, and most importantly, there is little to no effect from strong winds and turbulence, leaving the pilot comfortable and safe. The Hunting Eagle gyrocopter is ideally suited for aerial observation roles, photographic sorties, and in daily service for pilot training. The Hunting Eagle can carry one passenger in addition to the pilot. The Chinese-made gyrocopter is used by government agencies for traffic observation duties, search and rescue coordination, and border patrol. China is currently testing and employing gyroplanes within its military forces. Should this technology be improved, China may quickly develop an aircraft that could leave other nations behind. The ability to train masses of pilots quickly and in a cheaper platform than other forms of vertical or rotary wing machines can provide a logistical edge and translate into a tactical edge over countries with more sophisticated technologies.
International Defense Exhibition and Conference IDEX is the most strategically important tri-service defense exhibition in the world. IDEX is the only international defense exhibition and conference in the MENA region demonstrating the latest technology across land, sea and air sectors of defense. It is a unique platform to establish and strengthen relationships with government departments, businesses and armored forces throughout the region. IDEX is the perfect place to demonstrate equipment and crafts. Daily choreographed displays will take place on the water and on the purpose-built demonstration track. The unmanned systems area will bring together manufacturers and suppliers to showcase the latest and future unmanned systems and technology. Army Recognition is the official online show daily for IDEX 2015. To increase your impact before, during and after the event, contact our marketing team now. Gulf Defence Conference provided an impressive start to the week, offering insights from an illustrious group of senior figures that included six defence ministers, 12 chiefs of staff and a host of military leaders. It focused on new technologies and their relevance to modern defence systems. The conference is, uh, is very important for us as this is the first time that we have been able to meet so many distinguished people from so many different countries whose domain is uh, defense. It's an excellent forum that brings people together, uh, people of like mind, to think about the, the complex challenges that face us, and it's very helpful. Each speaker brought his own expertise to the event, stimulating debate and discussion and it was apparent to those present that dialogue remains an integral part of the defence industry. I realised that people or human beings are always eager to learn new things and this is what we have come here to learn for in this country. Today we met a number of high-ranking officers, generals from many countries all around the world and it is a very nice opportunity to do some networking. As long as we talk together, we do not fight one another. Again, they've all come to Abu Dhabi, so this is the opportunity for us. So far the traffic's been really good. We've seen a lot of the delegations come through. Today's been the VIP day, so we had uh, some of the Americans and some of the local company, country VIPs come through, and uh, the traffic's been great so far. Uh, it is a pleasure, the uh, head leadership of United Arab Emirates and the military leadership of uh, United Arab Emirates are visiting our stand. Held under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan, President of the UAE, IDEX takes place every two years at the Abu Dhabi National Exhibition Center, or ADNEC. This year's exhibition covered 133,000 square meters of space. It filled 12 exhibition halls, as well as outdoor exhibit space, and of course the NAVDEX Maritime Security Area. This is an unbelievable building, an unbelievable complex, uh, to do a number of things that make being an exhibitor, or a leader of exhibitors, uh, as I am, uh, successful because the infrastructure is successful. ADEX just uh, six, eight uh, years back uh, was, uh, let me say, a small show. Now it's incredible, it's incredible the venue, the organization, the structure and the logistics of the show. The 2013 event attracted more than 80,000 visitors to ADNEC, including over 500 ministers of defense and military leaders from all over the world. In total, 59 countries exhibited their latest technology. All the most important companies which we have in Germany and which are dealing with defense and security material are represented here in the IDEX 2013. Well, IDEX is the primary defense event in the region and so for our industry to be here is very important. I think the most important reason is all the key decision makers in defense are here.